to I'm gonna switch my camera and go through a little bit of um, the tools that I use, that I'll be using today. All right, so first we have the linoleum. Here is like an unmounted linoleum, so it's not on, sometimes they have a wood backing. This is just by itself, so it's like easy to, to fold and stuff. This came from a larger piece that I cut down into a smaller piece. This is actually just a piece of scrap linoleum that I had. So is this. Uh, this is what it looks like without anything on it. And this is with the, the image that I, that I sent out to everyone. Um, these are my uh, carving tools. It's like a little kit. Um, it comes with different, different gouges um, and then the, the actual tool handle. I like this one because it's really easy to hold. It's not too small. Um, the gouges that I'll be using today are this V gouge, which is used for line work and like small details. And then this small U, which is used to take out uh, small areas at a time. But, and then this wide U that's, um, the wide U that's used for taking out really large areas at a time. Um, this is the ink that I'm using, which is a, an oil-based ink. It says it's for fabric, but it works perfect on paper, uh, cardboard, plastic, anything really. It just takes a little bit to dry, and then once it's dry, it's on there. Um, this is my barium, which is used for applying pressure to the paper to create the uh, to create the prints. This is my roller, which is used to ink the plate once I'm finished carving it. Um, this is a horsehair brush, which I use to um, clean the brush off, like the little pieces of linoleum from when I'm done carving it. There's, there could be some little, some dust on it. So I just dust it off uh, before, I, before I ink it. And then the paper that I'm using today is, uh, it's a recycled uh, vellum of Bristol paper, which is like a, it's a little thicker than uh, the normal paper, but it's like very durable. Yeah. And this is a slip stroke, which is used to hone the tools. Um, it's very important to have sharp tools when you're carving. And this, when you use this beforehand, it kind of just like keeps them sharp and gets them ready to carve. And I usually do this like after every 30 minutes just to keep the blade sharp and it's just easier on the hands. But yeah, today we're going to be carving, I'm going to be carving this image of the Louisville skyline. Um, I just drew this really quickly on my iPad and uh, transferred it over using transfer paper and just a pencil. I taped, uh, I cut the, I cut the image out and then I cut the transfer paper the same shape as the image and then just taped it on and used the pencil to, to draw over it. And that made this, this transfer. Um, it's pretty durable, like you can rub on it and it doesn't rub away. Sometimes if I'm going to be, if it's, a, if it's a really large image that I'm going to be carving for like a, a couple of days, Sometimes I'll go over the transfer with a, with a Sharpie, just so that I know that it's there forever or for, for as long as I'm, I need it for. Because sometimes after like a couple of days, this can like get lighter. And yeah, especially if you're just like toiling over it with, your, with a little bit of sweat on your hands or something. But for a quick, uh, for a quick sketch like this or a quick carve like this, I think it's, it's perfect. But yeah, I'll start off by getting some of my tools ready, honing them. Usually while I'm transferring my image over, which I've already done, um, just cause it's, it's time consuming, but I'll think about the print that I want to produce and like what I want it to look like. Cause there's a, there's a few ways to go about an image like this. Um, one way is you can carve 
like the inner black lines, the drawn lines, and leave the background black so that you have a, basically a black square with the skyline, the lines of the skyline as your as the color of your paper, making your print. Or you can go in and carve out the insides of the buildings and then carve out the outlines to where you have the actual buildings and the the background would be the color of the paper it would be the negative space but it's just that's just a good time while you're carving it and you're actually um, we're not carving it while you're transferring it to the linoleum it's really um it's a good time to just think about the print that you want to produce because that's how you it's going to dictate how you carve it So basically what I'm basically what I'm doing now is just honing the may I ask at what um, angle you're doing that? Angle? Yes, sir. Oh, um I'm going with the angle of the blade. Oh, it's too I'm going with the angle of the blade and just going down at about like a 10 degree angle kind of with the blade. Like I'm just polishing, like I'm polishing it. Oh, okay, that's very helpful, thank you. And I'm just doing it to both sides. I'll do it to one side and then I'll switch over. And then I'll use the other side and find the V-shaped part which is here. And then I'll just do the inside, kind of going with the angle of the blade that it's already at. And just do a couple of, and that's just getting any like debris off of it. And it's just like making sure that the metal is, 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 um, is sharp or straight. There's no jagged edges or anything. Um, I usually do that mostly with the V-shaped tool because it gets the most use and it gets, it's the most, it has to be, it'll, uh, because it's doing detailed work, I want it to be the sharpest. I want it to, I don't want it to drag any linoleum away, especially at the end and take any, and just take away any details. The other ones, um, you can do the same. Um, you'd go with the blade and then you just kind of go with the curve of it every once in a while, just, kind of um, turning it slightly with the curve. And then again, you're just, you're just basically polishing it. And then the inside, you just find that, that curved shape that goes along with it and do the same. When I first started out, I didn't do this and yeah, you definitely notice a difference in the tools, especially after a while carving the same image. It'll it'll get a little bit harder to to work with. Your hands will start hurting a little bit more. But after doing this, it is a lot easier. Um, yeah, as far as the image is concerned, I think I'm going to go. I don't know, I guess it depends on what I'm thinking. If I wanted to like have a more of a night scene vibe, then I would just kind of do, I would just carve away the black lines. And then I could also, if I did that, I could add like a moon to the background and maybe some stars. Um, I could add like some rain, some rain textures. It could be a rainy day in Louisville. Um, If I did it the other way, I could play around with the static that would appear from carving away the background. But I think I'm just gonna go and just carve away the black lines, I think. And so it'll be sort of a, a solid block with the, with the skyline in the background. But you could go any way you want. Um, 
if you've never, I'm not sure how how, com how familiar you are, how much experience you have with Linode, with Lino Cut or block printing at all, Ruth. But if you have an extra, like a small piece of linoleum and you want it to play around with it and get a tool and get a get a tool, get a like a feel for the tools and the lines that they make so that you have a little bit more comfort with them. You can do that with like a piece of linoleum. Sometimes it just helps to take each tool and make a straight line and then maybe make some carved lines just to get a feel for how sharp your tools are and just the shapes that they can make. But yeah. I think I'm just gonna get right into it. So what I'll be doing is, I don't know if you can see this image, but all of the <laughs> all of the black lines I'm going to carve away so that it'll when I print it, it'll be the color of the paper. So it'll be this white. And then everything that's the gray on here will be black. So it'll be kind of like a solid block with the skyline in the in the middle. Yes. Of it. I can see it. Well, thank you. Uh, looks like a lot of carving. <laughs> oh. Well, mostly um, doing it that way, it's just mostly straight lines. So there's not really a lot of like mark making that you have to think about. But um, yeah, it's just carving is just an exercise in patience. So it's all about just having an idea of what you're doing before you do it and then just doing it. But there's a saying in printmaking, it's measure twice and cut once. So you always think about what you're going to do beforehand and then maybe think about it again and just before you do it. Oh. Also, a key to safety, it's, uh, you'll probably see me break this rule, but a really good rule to have when carving is to carve away from yourself. So like to carve away from your, to not have your hands in the direction that you're carving in. So like, that's a no, no to like, put it, put it behind your carve. So that way, if you slip, you're not cutting yourself. Many thanks. For some reason, when you cut, when you get cut by one of these things, it tends to bleed more than a normal cut does. I was gonna put um, band-aids on the supply list, but I didn't want to scare anyone away. <laughs> the cool thing about this medium is like how much the image can change during each process. Like this, the initial sketch on paper will be different, a little bit different than when you transfer it to the linoleum because a few things will change. And then once you start carving it, it won't be exactly the same because things will change as you're carving it. You know, the lines won't be the same. Is your left forefinger on the um, um, chisel? Um, you, Sorry? Right where you're working, your left forefinger, is it on the gouge or? Um, um, no. Um, on this finger, the, on this finger here? No, the, sir. That's, that's holding the gouge? No, you're on your left hand. 
Oh, this is just, this hand is just keeping the, the linoleum from moving. Thank you. So I'm just like putting a slight bit of pressure on it. And then um, I kind of have the, the blade hovering over the, over the linoleum. And then this finger here kind of is just, it's holding on to the linoleum, but like brace keeping the, oh, the blade oh. up. Oh, that's really helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if you see, I'm not going exactly with the lines. I'm just kind of using them as a as a guide. Because in my head, I know that it's not going to be exactly like that. So I'm not I'm not relying too much on it. I've always loved how meditative this is. Like you just kind of get lost once you start carving. You kind of, it's easy to just get lost. Norman, I'm curious if um, using the tools, the pressure that you apply makes a different look um, when you're carving or um, does that really matter to the end product? Um, it doesn't really add a different look. Like you can't really tell if you put more pressure on one part than the other. Um, Sometimes the, like the line will be deeper. I mean, it'll be wider just because like the deeper you go with the gouge, the wider it goes. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, if you, if you go too deep, you'll hit the, you'll hit the backing. You'll hit like the, I think it's Hessian is what it's called, Hessian or something, which is the, but um, I don't go too deep. I know that, um, yeah, if you go, if you if you don't go super deep, it could like get gunky if you over ink it. Um, but if you don't if you don't over ink it, it should be fine. Cool.
to get more of a feel of how deep you can go, just kind of uh, maybe draw some different size thickness lines and then like the deepness that you go would be would dictate would be dictated by how thick you want those lines like if you have a really thin line it's hard to go super deep unless you use like a small v tool like this but even that's not a it's not meant to go deep like i don't even think it could go yeah it's like half the thickness of the linoleum so it's just about getting a feel for the tools hey sarah Hi. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I'm actually watching from the airport now. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just going over some, just doing some carving. I went over the tools that I'm using and just like over a few technical things. I know I'm going pretty fast now, but usually I would like take it in sections just so that I can think about what I'm carving as I'm carving it and then just move on to the next section. when you're when you're carving something real small or something real detailed like this it's really important to have sharp tools if, if my tools if i didn't hone my tools i would be having a hard time right now because my blade would be dragging away parts that i didn't want to be dragged to be carved away just because of all the friction from from an unsharp blade 
but because I honed it before, it's just kind of gliding through. And if at any time while you're carving, you want to have an idea of what your image looks like, all that you have to do is take a piece of paper, um, place it over over your linoleum, and then just do a rubbing with a pen, with a pencil, and you'll see you'll see how your lines are, what their lines look like. Norman, I'm wondering if you could hold it up a little closer to the camera just for a moment to see kind of your progress so far. Yeah, that looks good. You can really tell that you were following the lines pretty closely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can kind of see a little parts of them, but I, I, I was following them closely, but they weren't, I was using them more as a guide and not just like a as like what I needed to do. Um, it's, it's best to just kind of like have some fun with it while you're going. Cause it's, it's really hard to, to do it exactly like your, like your transfer.
Yeah, once you have your block made, though, they last a long time if you wanted to use them for something like card, like greeting cards or thank you cards or little poster, like little postcards. <laughs> um, you mentioned you were using a fabric ink. Could you also use that um, block to print on fabric? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is the this is actually the the ink that I use when I make t-shirts or like tea towels and things like that. Um, yeah, it's a speedball. I like it because it comes in this this tube as opposed to a jar. Um, but yeah, it's um, it works great on fabric. It dries in a day. And then it takes a week for it to cure. So for it to like set into the fabric to where you're able to wash it. But after that week, it's pretty good. And um, like while it's still wet, it's uh, you can wash it with, um, with water. It's like soap and water. It's not, um, it's not like other oil-based inks that needs like, um, like solvents and stuff to clean up. So it's pretty easy. And it comes in different colors that are like all mixable so you can make your own colors and things like that. And the more you do it, the more, the more um, comfortable you'll get with it. With as far as the tools, you'll know, like you'll get a better understanding of the marks that they can make, and you'll just feel more comfortable. But don't feel like you have to go this fast or carve this this quickly. This is just because I've been doing it for so long that.
if you find that you end up making a mistake halfway or most of the way through, don't don't beat yourself up over it. Just kind of go with it. See if there's a way that you can incorporate that into the into the piece. But like I said in the beginning, this is just an exercise in patience and it's all about just like taking your time. It's eight hundred building the corner here. down here.
the time of day. So once you have your image carved, I like to go do a quick brush. You can like use a horsehair brush. You can also just use like a, just use your hands. A couple of snacks. Sounds awesome. Snacking on the table and it just gets all the little <laughs> bits that I just carved. Sometimes they'll go into the grooves and get in there and it just helps. I got this at like a, an estate sale, I think. I think it was a part of an old broom, but of course, perfect. Um, sometimes if I, like this is a cut piece that I could I cut from a larger piece of linoleum, it'll have little hairs on it. Sometimes they'll be long. I'll take like a lighter or something and I'll just like burn the edges. And, um, but this is fine. I don't think it'll get in the way of the inking or anything. And then I'll take all the all the carved bits. Either move them to the side or I'll put them in a trash can. So when you cut the larger pieces down to the smaller pieces, do you use scissors the way you did your fingers just then? Uh huh. Yeah, I just uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, I have a just a pair of sharp scissors that I use. It cuts right through them. It doesn't. Uh, uh huh. Thank you. It doesn't damage the linoleum or anything. But that's that's one Thanks. of the main draws to to the unmounted linoleum, which is the where it's not mounted on woods, is that you could just get large pieces and cut them down. And when you say transfer paper, is that carbon paper? Uh huh. Yeah, carbon paper. Or you can just draw right on the image. You can just draw right on the linoleum if you want. Um, but yeah, carbon Thank paper you. works well. Thank you. <laughs> Great questions. Um, Next, I'm going to go through inking, and then we can print this, this bad boy. Usually what I'll ink on is a cookie sheet like this. But for today, just to be a little bit, I'm going to ink on this, which is a piece of plexiglass from an old frame. Some frames don't have glass in them, they'll have like plexiglass. You can also use glass also, um, or a cookie sheet. Um, but yeah, I'll take this clear. This is my roller, what I'll be using. This is my block. I'll take a little dollop. Um, inking, what do I have to say about inking? Um, it's the most, I don't know, it seems like printmaking is all about feel and it's, it's the most that you have to have a real feel for as far as like, it's a lot easier to over ink, a, to over ink your plate. So it's kind of, um, go into inking kind of 
not with the idea of just like covering it in ink, but just like inking it, putting ink on it. So I'll go like, see that. So I'm not worried about like making a print right now. I'm just kind of worried about getting some ink on there just so that there's a nice little, a nice small base. Before I start, I usually have like a wet cloth or something like that, just for your fingers. Sometimes you'll get some ink on your fingers. I have a wet napkin just. But yeah. The way that I know that my ink, that my block is properly inked a little bit more here, is that it'll kind of have like a slight shine to it. The block will. It won't be like wet and goopy. It'll just have. It'll have like a like a slight sheen to it when you when in a certain light. But if you mess around with it and just make a few ink, make a few prints at different stages, you'll get a feel for it. But when you first ink a block, it's always it's always gonna be light. Your first your first print's always gonna be a little light just because just because um, just because you just inked it it's a freshly inked block the more you add ink to it the more you print on it the, the darker the blocks the darker the prints will be so like that's a pretty good inked block i don't know if you can see there's a slight sheen on it when i get it in the light there yes yeah and it's not goopy it's not like dripping or anything like that it's just uh, even Nice, even coat. You might have some ink on your hands and you just take a, and it just wipes right away. This, this uh, fabric ink wipes right away with water and the, there's also a water-based ink that's a little, that's easier to clean up, uh, but it dries faster. That's uh, that also just wipes up with some water. Um, with a print like this, where it's one color, you don't really have to worry about registration so much. Uh, with like multicolored prints, you have to worry about that, where you have to get the you have to get, uh, print it in the same spot each time to get the the paper in the same spot. Um, so for this one, I'll just, I'll take a piece of paper, like the exact same size of the paper that I'm printing on and I'll put it, I usually tape it to that paper so it doesn't move. Um, and then, I'll take the paper that I'm printing on and I will lay it directly on without touching the block. So I'm just matching up the sides of it so that it prints in the same spot. Then I gently lay it down. I go quick, I'll use one hand to hold the paper down. The block is like halfway under my hand right now. So I'm holding the block and the paper down. And then I'm using the other hand to gently apply pressure to the other side of the block that isn't covered up by my hand right now. And then I'll switch to the other side of the paper. And then I'll, move it. Or I'll, I'll apply a gentle, gentle pressure to it. 
I'll get the edges. And then I'll take, a, I'll take a, a hand, I'll keep, I'll hold on to it, and then I'll lift the paper up halfway and look at my print a little bit. See if it's okay. There you go. Now see, it's a little light because it's the first print and you have all this like static up here just from the ink just because it was the first inking that I did. If I inked, if I, if I printed this again, here, let me do it again. Lock here. It slipped because I was I didn't tape it down, but Do the same thing. Norman, there's a question about when you tape the block to the paper that's on the table mm -hmm. you put like a loop of tape under the block uh -huh. on the back yep um. yeah i'll just take a piece i'll take masking tape like this uh, a piece just make a loop of it so that it, and then just boop. So here's the second print should be a little darker maybe not so much because of the but it's all about the the amount of pressure that you apply to it and the amount of ink but that's also a cool part of the, the process, you know, is that here I have two prints and they're both slightly different, you know. But yeah. Boom. Does anybody have any questions for Norman? I have a question on another print of yours that I saw. Uh, you had letters, um, maybe a letter at the top left, letter at the bottom right, with maybe a leaf. I'm not positive <laughs> about that. Do you know which print I'm talking about? Um, not off the top of my head. Okay. I do a lot of I do a lot of prints incorporating like uh, like words and stuff. So, well, that that's what I want to know. Um, would you do the same thing? Only I understand you have to do it mirrored backwards. Yeah, you have to do a mirrored image. So, um, usually I'll, I'll I'll mirror an image in on uh, on the computer like electric like on Photoshop or something. But if you don't have Photoshop. If you have the image like um, drawn on paper or if you draw it out first, what I'll do is I'll go over that, that pencil drawing or that drawing with Sharpie. 
And with the Sharpie, you'll be able to flip it over and you'll be able to see the image on the other side. Or I'll use like a, or I'll go over it really well with like a pencil or something so that you'll be able to, because when you flip the paper over, that's the, that's the mirror image of it. And then you just transfer the mirror image over. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's like right. the poor, yeah, it's like my poor man's method of flipping images. It's just using Sharpies or, yeah, just flipping the paper over. That's a great question. Because this process is all about mirroring, mirror, mirroring or, and the reverse, reversing images. I have one question about ink colors. Um, do you always use black or do you sometimes use different colors? And if you do, how do you do that? And if you already talked about it at the beginning, how um, I, um, I used I use different colors. I, I prefer to I'm a I prefer to use color um, mostly. Um, I just got the black because it's it's really easy to see. But um, yeah, most of most inks, especially this ink here, as well as like the speedball, um, like water-based ink, they they come in different colors and they're all mixable, so you're able to mix your own colors and things like that. I have a I have a whole um, journal of uh, I like to write down formulas when I mix colors so that I'm able to get that color again. <laughs> And then would you use like different rollers, like one for each color when you're rolling it onto the block? Um, yeah, if I'm, if I'm using a multi, if I'm using multiple colors, I usually, um, I usually, I'm usually using one color on the block at a time. And if it's a different color, I'll, I'll already have that away and I'll already have the, like the roller cleaned and all that stuff from the last block, from the last color. Um, but if I'm doing like a gradient, then I'll just use like one, if I'm using like a, if it's going from like a blue to like a white or something like that in the same, in the same layer, then I'll use the same, I'll use the same roller. I'll just use two different colors on the same block and then I'll roll them out to make the gradient. Is it possible to hold the print up with the camera so that it, we're seeing the oh, yeah. side view rather than the uh, on view? Yes. Wow. So yeah, I went, the way that I carved it is I just carved all the lines out. That's what I was mentioning before. Mm -hmm. I could have done it to where the block, the buildings were solid and then the black that you see there was just, would just be the, well, I guess it, be, it would be the, like the inverse of this. Wow, that's so great to see. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you guys had a good time and I hope that it was informative and you have at least a little bit more um, confidence or like you feel like you're, you can do it. So I'm sure you can. Yes, that was great. Thank you so much for taking the time to teach this. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> and um, I think that they're, they're gonna, they recorded this and I think that they'll send you all a link to it if you, what you missed. And your prints are available where? Um, locally, they're available at um, Revelry. Um, I'm doing this. I have a show opening at Pyro Gallery on the 15th, on the 6th of August. And I have a oh. solo show opening November 15th at, um, at Garner Narrative Gallery in Nulu. And I also start a residency at Bernheim um, Forest on... Um, September 11th is when, well, September 12th is the first day, but yeah. Will that include public events or classes at Bernheim? There's going to, right now, there, everything that I have planned is virtual. I'm going to try to do a few things like while I'm there, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure if, if there'll be like planned things like on, on a schedule.
Yes. But I want to like do some interact, like some actual things. But most of the stuff that I have planned, I have some like some virtual tours planned. Um, I have um, like some live carving things where I'll be carving and answering questions about the process and about like my time at Bernheim and things like that. And will that include wood cuts uh -huh. then at the forest? I'm doing some birch, uh, birch plywood and some Japanese maple wood cuts. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, thanks for mentioning that. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, thanks for asking about it. I wouldn't have mentioned it if you didn't ask. Yeah. Hey, um, thank you. Thank and Norman, you. To, to keep in touch with you, should they follow you on Instagram or? Oh, yeah. Follow me on Instagram at Cloud Hotel Prince, all one word. Um, cloud like in the sky, hotel like where you stay, and then prints like what I just made. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Thank well, you. thank you, Norman, for being our artist in residence this month, and thank you all for joining us for this class. And we definitely will send out the recording. Awesome. Y'all have a good day. <laughs>